Hi, this is Pastor Josie Weymouth from the House of Praise here in North Long Beach. The name of my program is called Words of Encouragement, okay? So the name of my message today is called Don't Fret or Worry. The definition for worry means anxiety, to be concerned, to be nervous, stress, and agonize. In other words, the, the, word, uh, the word for worry came from an old English wagon, which originally meant strangle. The word worry meant strangle, okay? So let's get going. In other words, the root word for worry is fear. In other words, you know, the root word for worry is fear. Fear's behind it. You know, fear and trust are the opposites, okay? So let's keep going. Let's see what God has for us today as we get into the word, okay? Concerning worry, concerning fear, and concerning trust, okay? In other words, the definition for trust means to hope, to make someone a refuge, a firm belief of reliability, truth, ability, and strength, okay? So my first scripture is in Philippians 4, 6. This is where I got the title of my message, Don't Fret or Worry. This is Paul. He said, instead of worrying, pray. Let, let petitions and praises shape your worries into, into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life, okay? So he wants us to go to him whenever something, you know, what we're concerned about something. He wants us to go to him. Okay, so what is the picture that God is trying to paint for us as we go through these scriptures? Okay, so let's keep going. In other words, instead of worrying as a Christian, we must bring our concerns to God and and we are, we're to trust him. The word of God says that we have not because we ask not, okay? In other words, Lord, forgive us for worrying. He doesn't want us to worry, okay? Doesn't it say in Psalms 50, 15, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you? Let me say that again. This is the Lord speaking to us. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. And this is in Psalms 50, 15, okay? So let's keep going. Our next scripture is in Matthew 6, 25 through 34. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food to drink or food or drink, enough clothes to wear, is in life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you far more value to, valuable to him than they are? It says, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Why worry about clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. If God cares so wonderfully about wildflowers and are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he certainly, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Don't worry about the, these things. What you, eat, what you eat, what you will drink, what you will wear, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows your needs. He, he says in the word of God, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Tomorrow's, uh, today's trouble is enough for today. A lot of people are already concerned about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen the next day. God doesn't want us to do that. In other words, he commands us not to worry. In other words, somebody once said, don't worry about tomorrow. God is already in tomorrow. In other words, God spe uh, Jesus speaks against worry and anxiety because, our, because of our Heavenly Father who is mindful of our needs. He has pledged himself that if we seek his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things are going to be added unto you. Okay, we're to seek the Lord. In other words, by you worrying, it's not going to change anything. It's not going to add an, an inch to your height. It's gonna, not going to change your hair color. You know, he doesn't want us to worry. He wants us to cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. 
You know, worry is fear. What does the word of God, God say in 2 Timothy 1, 7? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. See, in other words, fear, worry is a spirit, and it's not of God. Okay, let's, let's keep going. In 2 Peter 5, 7, it says, casting your whole care your anxieties, your worries, your concerns once and for all on him, for he cares for you affectionately. He cares about you watchfully. And as somebody once quoted, why pull tomorrow's cloud over today's sunshine? Okay, so let's keep going. You know, my messages are not long, but I believe that we're going to get what God is trying to tell us today. Okay, the next one is in Psalms 55, 22. It says, turn your burdens over to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will never let the righteous person stumble. In other words, we're to burden him with what burdens us, okay? Okay, my next scripture is in 1 Samuel 17, and it's 36 through 37. This is David. In other words, trust means knowing someone enough that you can count on them. And that was David. Okay, let's keep going. Here, this is David. He's confronted with Goliath, okay? And he says, Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be, uh, shall be as one of them, seeing that he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord has delivered me out of the, pear, the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear." And he will deliver me out of the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine. See, David trusted God. David had been there for him. David delivered him from the lion. He delivered him from the bear. And he knew, he knew his God. He knew he was going to deliver him against this Philistine. He knew it because he knew his God. He trusted God. You know, if he had done it before, he could do it again. And that's the same with all of us. How, how well do we know our God? When you're going through hard times, remember, reflect on the things that he's done in the past for you. And he delivered you, and he's going to deliver you again. So remember the past. Remember what he's done. Remember the goodness of God, okay, that he can be trusted. Okay, so let's keep going. You know, I have a, I have, you know me, I'm a person of illustrations and pictures, okay? My first illustration it took place in the 1930s. 250 men were holding ropes to an airship. In other words, like a Goodyear blimp. They were holding on to it, keeping it from floating away. Suddenly, a gust of wind caught one end of the, of the airship and lifted it off the ground. Some of the, some of the men immediately let go of the ropes and they fell safely to the ground. Others pan panicked and they kept holding on to the rope. And as they went up higher, they finally let go. So when they fell, some of them got, got injured, okay? Okay, so uh, one man, however, continued to dangle high in the air for 45 minutes until he was rescued. And the reporters later asked him, how were you, how were you able to hold on to the rope for so long? And he said, I didn't hold on to the rope. He said, I tied it around my waist and the rope held on to me. Instead of trying to hold on to God, let God hold on to you. You know, let's just trust him. Let's just trust him with, with our lives and let him hold on to us. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay. Okay, the next one, this is Jesus. This is in Mark 4, 35 through 41. That same day when, when the evening was coming, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had went, they had sent the multitudes away. He took with them, okay, he, 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 excuse me, let me say that again. And when he had sent the multitudes away, they, they took him even as he was in the ship. And they were also with him. There was, in other words, there was other little ships who were following too. And there was arose a great storm, a wind. The waves beat against the ship. And so it was full now. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And when they awoke him, they said to him, Master, carest not thou that we perish? And he arose and he rebuked the wind and the sea. He said, Peace, be still. 
the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly. And they said to one another, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. See, it's easy to trust God when everything's okay. But it takes trust when fear is bigger than your strength. Let me say that again. It's easy to trust God when everything is okay. It takes trust when fear is bigger than your strength. Okay? So he's telling us he wants us to trust him. Okay? Even in our, our hard times, even when we're going through some storms, he wants us to trust him. Okay? So let's keep going. In Psalms 37, 5, it says, Commit everything that you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. In other words, he won't, he won't, in other, in other words, he's not going to take your burdens if you don't give them to him. Okay? We have to commit them over to him. We have to roll them over on him. Okay? He won't just say, oh, she's going through something. Let me take that. No. He wants us to ask. Okay? Okay, let's keep going. What does it say in Isaiah 26, 3? That he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on you because he trusts you. In other words, trusting the Lord gives us peace. What, ha what happened to Peter in, Mar in Matthew 14, 30? If you remember that he had his eyes on the Lord and he was walking on the water. But when he took his eyes off of the Lord, he was looked at the water, the wind, he started to sink. But as soon as he got his focus back on the Lord and he cried out to him, the Lord lifted him right up. We're to stay focused on the Lord, no matter what you're going through, no matter what storms you're going through. We're to stay focused on him. He says in Isaiah 26, 3, I'm going to read it again, that he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Okay, because we trust in him. We're to stay focused on him. Okay. Okay, remember he said that he would never leave us or forsake us. We're not alone. Remember who lives inside of us. The greater one lives inside of us. No matter what we're going through, guess who's inside of us. When we have to go somewhere, guess who's going with us, okay? Okay, here's another one. In Psalms 118, 8, it says, It's better to trust in the Lord than to depend on people. In other words, don't worry or fear because the battle belongs to the Lord. Okay? He doesn't want us to. We can't do anything. He wants us to give it to him. Okay? So let's go over to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Okay? We are to have complete trust in God in every area of our life. In other words, trust him with our home, trust him with our jobs, trust him with our families. Every area, every area of our life, we have to trust God, okay? And our last scripture, remember, is in Romans 8, 28. It says, we know that God causes everything to work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose, okay? You know, you know that, you know, in Isaiah 43, 26, the Lord, he says, the Lord says, put me in remembrance of my word. God wants us to remind him of his word. He's not a man that he should lie, nor a man that he shall repent. Has he not said it and will he not do it? Okay. People maybe have let you down. They say they're going to do something and they let you down, but not him. If the word of God says it, you can take it to the bank. Okay. So in other words, he wants us to, a lot of times when I'm going through things and there's nothing I can do. A lot of times we try to do things to try to fix things. And there's, a, there's times that you can't do anything. That's when I raise up my hands and I said, Lord, I surrender. I give it to you. There's nothing that I can do. I give it to you. But let me remind you, your word says in Romans 8, 28, that you're going to work out everything for my good. So I stand on your promise and I thank you, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay? We have to believe that God is first of all in control. And he is our loving father. Okay? But last of, but last but not least, I have a, my last illustration. Okay? In other words, 
In 1988, this was the, Wimper, the Winter Olympics. It featured blind skiers being trained at the, at the slalom skiing paired with sighted skiers, okay? In other, these were skiers that were blind, but they were paired with skiers, professionals that were, you know, that they could see, okay? And, okay, the blind skiers were taught on the flat, on the flats, how to make the right and the left turns. When it was mastered, they were taken to the slalom slope where the sighted partners, the sighted partners ski beside them, shouting left, right, as they obeyed the commands. They were able to navigate the course and cross the finish line, depending slow, solely on the sighted skier's word. It was either complete trust or it was a catastrophe. It was a matter of life and death. They had to depend on those sighted skiers and they had to obey, they had to follow them. This is a picture of the Christian life. We solely rely on the word of the only one who is truly sighted, and that's God himself. We're to trust the word of God. We're to stand on his promises that he's not a man that he should lie, nor a man that he shall repent, and, and he will do it. Okay, he will do it. Okay, so in other words, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. Okay, so my summary is that we are to roll our cares on him. Okay, number two, we are to burden God with what burdens us. Number three, we are to trust God through the storms of our life. Number four, okay, remember that worry is fear, and fear is the opposite of trust. Okay, worry is a sin. Okay, okay, number six, David knew his God. Do we know our God? And last but not least, remember that he will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because we trust him. Okay, so that's the end of my message today. So what I want to do is I want to pray over the message today. You know, I just felt in my heart with so many things that are going on right now, that we needed to hear this message, that the Lord put it upon my heart, that we needed uh, this message on trusting God and just rolling all of our cares over on Him, okay? So let's just pray. Lord, we're just so thankful for Your Word today. Seal that Word in our hearts that we will be doers of the Word and not just hearers only. Remind us, Lord, that we're to trust You in everything, Lord, in all of our lives, that we're to roll over our cares upon You, our burdens on You, Lord, everything that we carry, we're to give it to you, Lord. And we're just thanking you, Lord, right now for your precious word. Seal it in our hearts, Lord, right now. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now before I, I, before I close my message, I always want to pray a prayer of salvation or rededication, okay? So maybe somebody that's listening, uh, listening out there, you've never accepted Jesus into your heart before. And you would like to do that today. So I'm going to pray with you. Maybe you're away from God. Maybe you're a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter, and you want to rededicate your life to God, okay? So just say a simple prayer with me, okay? Just say, Father, forgive me of all of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior and help me to live for you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. And like I always say, Till next time, may God richly bless you.